there's like a whole I, I don't know what it would be like a subculture mm -hmm. uh, of white women who will get QOS a black spade tattooed on their bodies where they some have a husband who they might be cuckolding or the husband is just turned on by the idea that their wife primarily or only fucks black men. Mm -hmm. and, and this would be a white husband? Yeah, it has, okay, it's yeah. just a white husband. Um, I mean, usually. Yes. Yeah. But um, I'm sure there are also some that are married to black men and all this stuff. But it's, it's like completely rooted in the idea that one of the filthiest things a white woman can do is have sex with a black man. Mm -hmm. You have sex with a man, period. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody's skin doesn't somehow now make them filthy. Mm -hmm. So like the idea of like even using a queen of spades, spade is a racial epithet. Mm -hmm. And it's not the N word, but it's definitely a racial epithet. Mm -hmm. So, but it's one of those that can kind of move, I guess people think it sounds cool, I don't know. But to me, fetishizing a race removes the humanity from the people within it. Yeah. So that was kind of what led to that that conversation on uh, on it. Now, to understand racial fetishization in America, you have to go back to almost everything. Everything in America pretty much goes back to slavery. The reason right. America is as rich as it is is because it was built on the backs of slaves. Mm -hmm. The number one uh, product in America was slaves. So in order to make sure that this worked after you know international slave trade was banned, in order to reproduce and, and build up slaves here in America, one of the primary things that was had was slave plantations. Slave plantations and breeding plantations in Virginia. Virginia was one of the most, was, was the place where that was, that was the, the number one product. So some of our signers of the Declaration of Independence and presidents had breeding plantations in Virginia to supply slaves to, to the Mississippi Delta and other parts of the country as it expanded. So on these breeding plantations, you would have what was considered bucks, which is a, a word that is also used a lot for black men within the porn industry, who would be expected to impregnate a certain amount of girls because these were all young people, because remember, we didn't live that long on the plantation. Mm -hmm. So boys before a certain age and girls before a certain age were expected to have a certain amount of children before they reached like 14, 15 years old. If they didn't, some of the boys would get castrated. Uh, some of the girls would be experimented on, which is how we get minor, modern gynecology. And they were tortured. So the idea of like, for example, within the porn industry, you will see white men with a complete array of sizes, shapes, and stamina of dicks. Mm -hmm. But black men, if you're not of a certain size, people get turned away all the time because the stereotype is a black man is supposed to have a big dick. Mm -hmm. Across the entire race of black folk, there's all types of dicks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But because of the way we were sold and commodified in this country, you know, when a white man would look to go purchase a black man at the auction block, one of the things that they would do besides checking our mouths and do all these other things as if we were chattel, they would look and try to find big penises because they thought that person has a more likely ability to impregnate more people. Right. So they get it in their head now. If you're, and, and this is just kind of like one of those examples of how racism affects the racist as well as the person that they are racist against. Mm -hmm. If you're out there looking for big black dicks all day <laughs> and that's what you're trying to find and pick, then it's going to make you feel some kind of way about yourself, mm -hmm. regardless of what your own dick size is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then if you think in the industry and this practice has changed a little bit, but there used to be a lot of white women who would charge a higher fee to be with black men. Yeah, the interracial and, rate. And that actually wouldn't have anything to do with that man's size because you might have fucked a white man or a Spanish dude or, or Asian person with a bigger dick. Mm -hmm. But because he was black, you charge him more because you feel like you're going to be soiled or sullied. You know what I'm saying? It's like getting the, the what is that, the uh, scarlet letter yeah. for, for being with a black person. And... That shit is so fucked up when yeah. you think about it. And people are supposed to be turned on by that. 
you know what I'm saying? It's still that same kind of power dynamic that is not allowing people to actually be free and loving and passionate and explore their sexuality in all of the ways that we would like adult entertainment to be. Hey guys, if you wanna support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.